Okay, so in the last video, we introduced the idea of polyprotic acids. All right, so these were molecules, acids specifically, that have more than one proton to donate. And we talked about how these polyprotic acids undergo sequential acid dissociation reactions, and each of the dissociation reactions comes with its own equilibrium constant. An example here we can say is H2X would react with water to make HX minus anhydronium. We would say this has pKa1 or Ka1. And then the second reaction, the product of the first reaction, which is still an acid, undergoes a second acid dissociation reaction to generate the fully deprotonated molecule X2 minus and a second hydronium. This reaction would be characterized by a different pKa. Okay, so if you had a triprotic acid, you would have three pKa's, three acid dissociation reactions. So in this video, we're going to explore this idea a little bit further, and we're going to think about how we can predict a speciation curve for these if we know the pKa values. All right, so the speciation curve we're gonna see is essentially an identical setup to what we saw in the past, except now we're gonna have to deal with all three chemical species. H2X, which I'm going to show in red. HX, which will be in green and I'll go ahead and make the fully deprotonated form in purple. Okay, so just like we saw before, we are gonna plot the concentration of these chemical species as a function of pH. Okay, and just like we saw before, under really acidic conditions, it's the most acidic form of this molecule that's present. Okay, and as you begin to increase the pH, make the solution more basic, the concentration of this molecule starts to drop off. And eventually, it will zero out. Okay, and according to this first equilibrium, as the concentration of H2X begins to decrease, we convert it to HX. So at the same place that H2X starts to decrease in concentration, HX starts to increase in concentration. Okay, and it will maximize at about the same point that the concentration of H2X reaches zero. So under these conditions, we have completely converted our H2X to HX. But now note here that according to the second equilibrium, all of the HX can be converted to X negative two, the fully deprotonated form. So as we continue becoming more basic, this intermediate starts to decrease in concentration. And as this is decreasing, we are producing the fully basic form. So this form of it really is zero all the way up until we start, in, start to produce it as HX is decreasing. Okay, so at any given point in this speciation curve, all three of these species exist in some amount. At the very, very beginning, we have almost exclusively H2X. But as we begin to make this solution more basic, the concentration of H2X decreases because it gets converted to HX. HX subsequently will be converted to X negative two as the solution becomes even more basic. And since this is a diprotic acid and this is the fully deprotonated version, anything more basic than this continues to be 100% X negative two. Okay. so. The value of this curve is being able to quickly look at a certain pH and figure out what chemical species is gonna be present or which chemical species are gonna be present. But to be able to do this well, we need to be able to label this with 
the relevant information. And in this case, the relevant information is going to be pKa1 and pKa2. So just like we saw in the, uh, the first speciation video, we established that when the concentration of weak acid equals the concentration of weak base, that's where pH equals pKa. The same thing remains true here. When the concentration of H2x equals the concentration of Hx, at this point, the pH equals pKa1. Okay, so when we have an equal mixture of the diprotic acid and the monoprotic acid, pH equals pKa1. When the concentration of Hx equals the concentration of X, then this is where the pH will be equal to pKa2. Okay, and the other point where we can actually figure out the quickly figure out the pH is exactly <clears throat> is when we are exactly halfway between pKa1 and pKa2. So when we've maximized the concentration of our intermediate, at this point right here where we have 100% of our Hx, the pH here is actually going to be the average of pKa1 and pKa2. So if we were to put some numbers to this, so let's say pKa1 were to be equal to 3 and pKa2 equals 7. So the pH right here would be 3. That's when we are 50% diprotic, 50% monoprotic. The pH right here would be 7. That's our second pKa. And this intermediate pH where we've converted exactly all of our H2x to Hx, this is going to have a pH of 3 plus 7 over 2, so the average of these two will be 5. So this pH is 5. Okay, And this approach always works for any polyprotic acid. So let's see another example here. We'll quickly go through this one. So let's say we have a triprotic acid, H3x. So a way of abbreviating this is that H3x can become H2x. And let's put some charges here. Let's say this one's plus one, this one's zero. Hx would be negative one, and x would be negative two. So each step here, each equilibrium, um, is removing a proton, making uh, an intermediate with one less, with uh, one fewer protons and one more negative charge. Okay. A triprotic acid has four, four chemical species. That's what we observe here. And let's go ahead and assign pKa values. Let's say the first one is three, the second one is seven, and the last one is nine. Okay, so here's our three pKa values and our four chemical species. I'm gonna go ahead and set up a speciation curve. And just for consistency, I'll go ahead and try to stick with similar colors as we used up here. So the fully acidic will be red and then green and then purple. So red, then green, then purple, and we'll finish off with our fourth chemical species in orange. Okay, so under the most acidic pHs, we have our fully protonated form, but its concentration will drop off. And as it drops off, the concentration of H2x begins to increase. Right? It, it maximizes. And then as we continue to become more basic, we can start converting H2x to Hx. So this starts to drop off. And as it drops off, the concentration of Hx starts to pick up. Hx will subsequently be converted to x negative 2. So its concentration will fall as the concentration of our last chemical species 
increases. Okay, so these speciation curves will always look like this. As one chemical species is dropping, the next one is increasing. It will maximize, it'll start to drop, and the next one starts to form. The last thing we want to do is to assign pH values. So at this first point where the concentration of the first two species are equal, this is our first pKa, 3. At the second point where the concentrations are equal, this is our second pKa, 7. At the third point where our concentrations are equal, this is our third pKa, 9. The other things we talked about we can label are these intermediate pHs. So at this point right here, we have 100% H2x, and this is going to have a pH that's an average of these two, so its pH will be 5. At this point right here, when we have 100% HX, the, the pH will be the average of these two, so 8. So what we can do is very quickly look at this graph, right? We can look at this curve and say, at pH, let's say, 6, we have a mixture of HX and H2X, with a little bit of the other stuff hanging around, but it's primarily HX and H2X. At a pH of 8, we have nearly 100% HX. At a pH of 8.5, we have a mixture of these two chemical species. And by the time we get to pH 10, we have essentially all of our X negative 2. <clears throat> So the reason we take time to go through this speciation of polyprotic acids is that essentially all of the most important biomolecules are polyprotic acids. And their chemical speciation is going to be dependent on what condition they're present in. So biological pH tends to be around 7. So from this curve, we could figure out that at pH 7, we have a mixture of these two chemical species, and which one of them actually exists is going to impact the chemical reactivity and the chemical properties of the molecule under these conditions.